I'd like to call this meeting of the Ellsworth Planning Board together. It's Wednesday, February 3rd, 5.30, probably 5.32. Uh, I would like all each member of the planning board to introduce him or herself, please. I'm John Fink. John DeLeo. Nelson Giel. Rick Lyles. Molly, you're muted. Molly Friedland. Okay. Next item of business is adoption of the minutes from January 6th. Is there a motion regarding the minutes, please? So moved. Any, is there a second? Second. And is there any discussion regarding the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise a hand. Okay, thank you. Next item is the final plan review for a major subdivision entitled Patrick's Way for Bridge Twin LLC. The proposal is to create two new residential rental units on 15.2 on acres, tax map 35, lots 20 and 21, located on Patrick's Way. All of the subject property is located in the neighborhood and rural zones. There's someone representing the applicant, please. Stephen Salisbury. Okay, go ahead with just a brief uh, description of the project, please. Sure. We uh, are, uh, I'll put it up on the screen. We're talking about adding two additional units to a piece of land off the, what was formerly the Eastern Road, now called East Main Street, um, kind of across from where Consolidated Communications has a facility. Um, there's an existing road where my pointer is now. There's unit one, unit two, a duplex three and four. And our proposal is to add five and six further away from the road. Um, recently, the, the owner um, installed a water line under East Main Street, a six inch line for the fire hydrant that's proposed to go in this location. That will go there. Um, the water line's been put in right over here. We'll just extend the service down the shoulder of the road and put the hydrant in the right of way. And the city will take over responsibility for that once we um, install that. And that's the end of my presentation. Okay. As we left off last time on this matter, the application was found to be complete. This evening, we will look at the merits of the plan, any uh, deficiencies that we find or not find. Are there any questions or comments from the board? I had one question. Um, there is no subdivision of property within this overall thing, right? So, you know, it's not like unit one could be sold off without further evaluation or something, right? That's right, we'd have to come back to the planning board to sell them off individually. It's okay. much like an apartment complex will be. Okay, okay. I guess I've got a question for Nate, because right now I'm just looking at a screen that says a leader in 2020 Gartner Magic Quadrant for Meeting Solutions. I've, I've lost all video. I wonder if Nate can direct me how to get back to the meeting. Well, it sounds like you might have another app up. So, uh, go to your start menu and click on your Zoom icon again. I see the other Rick oh. Lyles has showed up. Okay. I just minimized it, so I guess I can see it now. Yeah, this is Patrick. I, w I, w I don't think I was sent an invite, so I had to borrow Rick's. So there's and the, the lesser, well. the lesser, so you, lesser you Rick, wish? Rick Lyles is here. Um, yeah. So, Patrick, do you wish to continue as Rick, or would you like us to recognize that you as you? However, you know, I defer to the judgment of the, uh, the chairman. But well, now your box says Patrick. There we go. We'll go with that. Well, oh, okay. This is a public hearing. Anyone may comment on this matter. Uh, Kerry, Nate, do we have anyone who wishes to comment?
I don't have any uh, comments, John. None in Zoom either. Huh, okay. In that case, the public hearing is closed. What would the board like to do? Switch the camera. I'll make a motion that we approve the major subdivision plan and title Patrick's Way for Bridge Twin LLC to create two new residential rental units on a 15.2 acre tax map, 35 lots, 20 and 21, located on Patrick's Way. All the subject property is located in the neighborhood and rural zones. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion, please? Hearing none, all those in favor, please? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Before you move on, you skipped mm -hmm. over election of officers, if that's a real thing. Uh, that oh, was it is. I didn't even see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I suppose we ought to do it. Excuse me here. I'm just getting myself. There we go. Okay. In that case, uh, obviously, the officers' terms are up, and we need to elect new officers. We have chairman, vice chairman, and the secretary. I'll nominate John Fink for chairman. Second. Is there, is there a second? Second. Is there a nomination for vice chair? Oh, well, let's go with John DeLeo. You think so? Yeah. OK. All <laughs> second. Yeah, thanks. And for secretary? Nominate Rick Lyles. And I, I'm, I'm willing to give up that exalted rank, by the way. No, no, too bad. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll second that motion. Uh, you will accept it, Rick? Yeah, sure. What the hell? And you'll you'll get even with Nelson, right? Pretty sure. <laughs> All comes okay. around. Um, shall we vote for the slate? Yes. Or do you want to go do it individually? No. All in favor of these officers, please. Okay. There are no big changes. Consistency is such an important thing. There's some truth to that. Depends upon the competency of competency of the consistency, however. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, skipping to item six. Having jumped back to uh, item four, it's a final plan review for a major use subdivision entitled 8 Union Street for Barbara and Dale Joyce. The proposal is to subdivide the interior of the building to create one residential unit, six professional office spaces on a 7 tenth acre parcel located 8 Union Street, tax map 137, lot three. All of the subject property is located in the neighborhood zone. Is someone representing the applicant, please? Steve Salisbury, the applicant. Uh, since our last meeting, I revised the project narrative slightly to emphasize that we're talking about inserting professional um, offices in this building. So that's clear, that's consistent with the zoning language. Um, what else did I do? I, I want to make it clear we're talking about a two bedroom B&B &B without a kitchen. That uh, I've had discussions with staff on that. And to my knowledge, nobody's said that's inconsistent with the life safety codes or the building codes. We can have a two bedroom rental without a kitchen. Um, for the Public, I'll pop up the uh, site plan there, familiarize everybody. Uh, this is Union Street, after just after the intersection of Main Street. Bayview Avenue is on the right-hand side of the page over here. This parking lot already exists. There's 20 spaces. We're going to take that down to 19 spaces with the addition of this handicap ramp here. Uh, we'll still have more than adequate parking for our proposed uses. 
I think we're four or five spaces in excess of the minimum parking requirements. That's all I have to say at the moment. Question from the board. Yeah, one for, for Dwight. Uh, Dwight, in the table of use regulations uh, for that zone, allowed use as personal service establishment, which is defined on, if, if you happen to have your manual, is defined on uh, chapter 14 on page 22. Could you just kind of give me an idea of what a personal service establishment would be? You happen to have your manual with you, Dwight? Yeah, no, I do, I do. Personal services is businesses primarily engaged in providing services involving care of an individual. That could be like a beauty shop or anything where you, they're gonna care for you. So it could be a doctor's office, it could be anything like that. Basically, the, their primary operation is not to sell a product, although they sell accessories like you go to the shop and they may give you a, you can try a special shampoo or something like that. I mean, I mean, it seems like it's very similar then to the professional and business offices and professional establishment uh, on page 23. I mean, the professional uh, the business office is basically um, home occupation and professional establishment. I mean, they're, they're similar, very similar in nature. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I would I would throw out a, a suggestion for for the approval to include in the approval is because <clears throat> there are some retail according to the the zoning. Uh, convenience store could be put in in the neighborhood zone so i mean i would offer out a suggestion that uh we accept this uh with the provision that besides the the uh, apartment um that it be limited to basically what's defined on page on section 14 page 23 professional establishment um which includes lawyers, accountants, financial advisors, architects. I mean, you could throw in their professional business as well, also, also, which is just above it. Um, yes, right. we, we do know, John, that we have some work on our definitions to do. Uh, in case with this one, when you, when you looked at commercial use, some of the things just, they don't, like you said, they don't meld good together. So we are going to be, look, staff will be looking at that. Yeah, I'm just afraid. I mean, I, and I, I certainly don't doubt Steve and, and the potential owner as to what they want to do. But I think it, unless we specifically restrict the uses to these, you know, somewhere in the future, the owner could change their mind and put something in that, that uh, we don't feel really fits in that neighborhood. Well, any, any change of use would have to come through the, the code enforcement office. But you could also put a restrict on the plan that states what the guidelines of the planning board would like to see. I mean, that would be my suggestion. I'd love to hear from other members. The, the way I read it is that this is a non-conforming use, um, you know, because professional establishment uh, is related to home occupation. And this really isn't a home occupation. What it really is is a, is a bunch of offices. <clears throat> Which is which is fine, except that it's not allowed in that zone, really. Uh, well, at the, at, at the same time, the medical offices that were there previously established that non-conforming use, and this is just a you know it's a it's a similar sort of deal. So I have no problem with this with this going forward, but I think it needs to be stipulated that this is a a, a non-conforming use, uh, plus the fact that commercial stuff is is disallowed. Uh, in the table under neighborhood, uh, you know, what's allowed in the neighborhood zone. Well, let me give you some history, if I may. Okay. The, uh, the original owner came to the city, was issued a minor conditional use for that to be a commercial use for that office building when it was medical. Well, a long time ago. 
Well, I know, but it's still a grandfathered. No, no, no. Deal. I'm just saying that was a long time ago, right? I mean, just right. clarification. Well, it was in the it was nine in the, in the late nineties. Hmm. That's a long time ago to me. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> uh -oh. sure. so, so what you're saying is that he was issued a conditional use to allow this thing, which is in essence a non-conforming use way back in 1990. And this is just the same sort of continuation of that same sort of use. Right. right. Uh, I think that's be careful. What's, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. You can't expand a non-conforming use, but you can continue to, you can continue to operate it. Right. No, no. And he's not, he's not really expanding it because that really relates to the building and the building is the same size, basically. And, and I, and I assume that that would also go uh, for the fact to the, to the point that it violates the setback requirements as well. But it's always kind of always done that. So I assume that that's right. a grandfathered in sort of thing as well. Right, it is, as long as we don't increase that non-conformity, that's right. correct. So, so the deal is that I think that this needs to be, you know, kind of in the record, uh, whether it needs to be on the plan or not, I don't know, but, uh, but certainly needs to be in the record that, that if we uh, approve this going forward, that uh, was with the understanding that it's a non-conforming use and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Excuse me, Steve, how many professional offices are being planned? Six, plus the owner's studio. Or does that include the studio? Well, the studio is a retail use. It's not retail, it's for the photography studio. Oh, as in taking photographs. Yeah, and developing the film and what and, have and you. That, and, that's, and that's the guy that actually lives upstairs, right? Yes, correct. That's the owner. So, so that, that works as a professional um, home establishment or home use or whatever it's called. So, you know, that's the way you get around the, the uh, photography stuff, I think. How is this then a minor subdivision? Because it's more, it's multiple units where before... The doctor, it was her, all her business. Yeah, but how is this a minor subdivision? Minor subdivision is four or fewer. Uh, I mean, the, the agenda list is, is a major subdivision. It's right. major. Oh, what it, okay, because I was looking at, I'm looking at the application, the actual application mm -hmm. project classification that says minor subdivision. Yeah, well, initially I thought it was minor because of the, we had two, uh, three different uses, you know, residence okay. and office. I was dividing the uses, but physically there's yeah. six okay. offices and, and two residences. Yeah. So it's probably been major. Now, the Airbnb is a, it's a rental. Rental. It's not a residential unit. Why, how do you figure this is in compliance with the zone? Well, there's... It's, it's like... We're not, call, it's we're like, not calling it a dwelling unit. It's not a dwelling unit. It would be no different than if you would go rent a motel room or a suite yeah. and not have a kitchen. There is a motel allowed in the zone? Well, I don't think that one unit would classify it as a motel. Well, nonetheless, it's a rental unit that is not a residential unit or rental units permitted in the neighborhood zone. Yeah, boarding is allowed yeah. specifically. Yeah. Boarding is allowed. That's probably the closest we can come to a definition. Seems that we don't define what an Airbnb is. Yes. Okay. Further uh, comments or questions? Another question for Dwight. Uh, get a lot of them tonight. So you'd said a, a change in use would have to come to the CEO's office anyway. Um, and I've heard the types of uh, offices that are contemplated to go in to, to these five units. Uh, so if someone in the future were contemplating some sort of retail or some sort of manufacturing you're saying that would have to come to your office and 
would you, in the case of retailer manufacturing, uh, determine that that expansion of the non-conforming use that had been grandfathered would be out of bounds? That would be too much of a stretch. That, and that's correct. And, I, and our office has the authority to send any issue we have like that for planning board approval. If we get something like that coming in, we're not going to, I'm not going to take the responsibility for it. I'm going to pass that on to you folks. Okay. So I did just want to mention this evening, we'll, we'll see when we get to the public hearing, if anybody's hanging on with us tonight, but both in the previous uh, uh, session, when we looked at this and uh, in the run up to tonight, we have received through email public comment and uh, the risk of paraphrasing a little bit, my interpretation of those comments were a concern that the uh, that there could be creep around the, the commercial use of, of this property. And there was already concern that the number of office spaces versus the number of re retail spaces. So um, I have heard and I understand the grandfathering of the non-conforming use, but also want to reflect back that that commentary that we've received from the public that there is a concern in the neighborhood about um, that sort of growth or expansion around the commercial aspect of the of the property. Yeah, understood. I mean, one fear I have, Nelson, is if we don't include language <clears throat> in the approval itself, uh, if I'm not mistaken, unless Dwight has changed his mind, uh, he'll be retiring in the, in the near future. And this goes to somebody who maybe has a different point of view from what code does or doesn't do. Uh, I think, you know, if we include that restriction on the plan itself, then there is no chance of misinterpreting it. Let me just jump back for one second uh, in terms of the, the Airbnb thing, uh, whether that's allowed or not. Under the uh, table of use regulations, uh, under lodging, there's two categories, bed and breakfast or hotel motel. And I would argue that a bed, that uh, an Airbnb is basically a bed and breakfast uh, sort of thing. So, and that's an allowed use in neighborhood. So that's not, to me, that's not an issue. Yeah, the bed and breakfast um, doesn't, it would include meals, would it not? Good. Not all bed and breakfast necessarily have breakfast, though. I mean, the thing is, the Airbnb is now being used as a as a as a as a, as a land use kind of thing, and I don't think that uh, you know most zoning ordinances don't, or at least the old ones don't address it in that sort of in that fashion. Uh, they would call it a bed and breakfast or a rental unit or whatever. So. I think that the, the I think the the Airbnb thing and kind of in quotes is consistent with bed and breakfast. So okay. I don't. I don't. Uh, okay, uh, in our definition of bed and breakfast, it's any dwelling in which lodging is offered for compensation to persons either individual individually or as a family with or without meals. But this is not a dwelling unless it is part of the dwelling unit that is in, that's to be included in this use. And this right is Right now it's a shared bath and everything, so. Is it shared, is the bathroom shared with the family? I believe so, is that not correct, Steve? Yes, right now physically there's a shared bathroom. That may change in the future, but our plan. Uh, if it changes in the future, <clears throat> would that rental units still have access to the main dwelling? Careful here. Because if it doesn't, then it's not part of the dwelling unit. Of course, part of the dwelling unit, it's under the same roof. Not if it's completely separate from it. I, I'm sorry, where, where are you seeing that it has to be within the dwelling unit? And the definitions. A bed and breakfast? Yes. Any dwelling in which lodging oh, I see is what you're saying. So if it's not part of the dwelling, then that would not, it seems that we've got a, uh, an interesting interpretation then. 
if it's completely separate. Not a se not, but it's not in a separate dwelling. It's a separate part of a dwelling. Right? If there is communication between the two, I would agree. But if it were completely closed off, then I think we need to look at it a little harder. I think to confuse it even more, well, confuse it even more, go to page nine and and read the definition of dwelling unit. All I can all I can commit to is what's shown on the plan right now, and they're committed to having that shared bathroom. Future changes would have to get permitted. We sure do have some sloppy language in this thing. <laughs> that is why the, the universe created new versions. <laughs> and our planning boards, unfortunately. Well, planning we could have, you know, boards. you know, Rick, we could duck out of this very easily right now. By... Oh, wait, wait a second. Right to my right is Ed Bearer. Well, why don't we ask Ed? Is that an invitation? Yeah, that certainly is. It's close yeah. enough. Um, uh, I, I'm following the discussion, and um, I, I guess I want to pose a question first. Uh, the agenda calls this a major use. My understanding is that it's actually before you, not for the uses, but for the subdivision aspect of it. And that, uh, if that's correct, then I, I'm not sure that your discussion about what is or what isn't a professional establishment or this or that is, is germane to whether this project, this building, uh, this interior subdivision gets a nod of approval or not as a subdivision. And then with each individual unit that is filled, it's up to the code officer to determine um, whether that use is allowed in the district. Um, that's my thought about all of the commercial uses uh, on the property. Um, as for the, sub, uh, the, the residential uh, aspect of it and the bed and breakfast, um, uh, your definitions are uh, as good as you'll find anywhere. I mean, I participated in a planning board meeting in Bar Harbor where they, they approved a 31 room bed and breakfast that was built from the ground up and it has a definition similar to yours. Um, uh, but I do think the chairman has a point that uh, the, as I understand that definition in your ordinance, it's for, it's for a unit within the dwelling. Um, right now, it sounds like you may have that, um, but I'm not sure that that's the applicant's, in, applicant's intent. But again, I guess that would be for the code officer to decide if, if that meets the definitions or not. I just I, I don't want I don't want you to think that um, I, I just don't think that this is anything more than a subdivision and so I'm not sure that the the discussion about uses is all that applicable. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, I am. Re I should have thought of that. I didn't, and I am much relieved because now we can just deal with the issue of the subdivision, which is much easier. Um, Anything else on the board? Mark, I see, is with us in, in, in video and I assume audio. Yes. So what would the board like to do at this point? Well, I guess I'd have to ask another question and based on what Jet, Ed just said, is, <clears throat> I mean, do we go ahead, is the plan to go ahead and just approve this as a subdivision with no uh, restrictions to it? The restrictions that exist in the ordinance as to what is allowed in the zone. Yeah, but I mean, that's... Yeah, but as, as, a, as a subdivision, we're looking at 
can this building be so subdivided into the units proposed? Is that sort of subdivision even germane? I mean, I've always used subdivisions as, you know, you have a parcel of land and you, and you cut it up and, and you subdivide it, could, it, right? It could be subdivision of a, of a building. Of a building, okay. Yeah. With, with the same owner? I think your, your, sure. your last application was exactly that. It was a, it was a, a, a two unit apartment. It, it was a multi, it, it wasn't a land subdivision. <clears throat> your, your ordinance is, is, is rather unique in that you, you do review commercial properties under, your, uh, under the definition of subdivision. Most communities don't, but um, you, this is essentially what's known as a developmental subdivision. If you came in and constructed a six unit apartment building, that would be a subdivision that would require your review and approval. Okay. Such silence is, uh, I don't know if it's helpful or not. Uh, let me do this, let me open the public hearing. Does anyone wish to comment upon this? Carrie and Nate, do you have anyone? I have no comments, John. Nothing from Zoom chat. Excuse me? Nothing from Zoom chat. Okay. Do you have to read the, uh, the like uh, Nelson was talking about before, do you need to read the uh, comment that was received by email? Do you need to read that into the record or not? Does I someone don't. have it in front of them? I don't have a printout of it and it's not I have a copy. this computer. I have a copy here. Okay, Could, would you please read that then? Sure. Uh, this was received from Quarantine Howe on uh, Thursday, January 28th uh, via Carrie Taylor in the uh, city office. To the members of the Ellsworth Planning Board, I'm the owner and year round resident of 16 Union Street next door to 8 Union Street on the other side of Bayview Avenue. I attended the planning board meeting on January 6th via Zoom as what happens with 8 Union Street is of obvious concern to me. I'm grateful to my neighbor across the street, V. Kelly Bellis at 17 Union Street for submitting questions prior to that meeting. The meeting of January 6th was very reassuring because the board members brought up the questions I had as well as others. I do not have experience or knowledge in code enforcement and related matters, so I was very happy to see that the board members took the time to look at this application closely, even asking questions despite it being a preliminary plan review. As one of the next door neighbors, my worry is about how this plan could change the neighborhood and, qual and quality of life that in the almost 10 years I've been here has been pretty quiet and peaceful. And it's important to me and I assume all my neighbors that this continue to be the case that we keep having a neighborhood that is pleasant to live in. I therefore confirm the points that were brought up during the meeting on January 6th. Point one, I liked hearing that there are limitations on what businesses can be established in the office spaces due to the zoning restrictions and would like that to be included as suggested in the approval proposal if approved because those not being in there could lead to a precedent or a loosening of restrictions for the future. Point two, the fact that the preliminary use is supposed to be residential is important. And this was brought up as there is much more office space than residential space in the current application. Point three, the letter dated January 19th announcing the final plan review now only mentions one residential unit, which makes me think the application was amended to remove the second so-called residential unit with no kitchen. The original application stated that this unit would possibly be used in the future as an overnight rental space. Is there a certain question? Is there a certain percentage of space in the building that needs to qualify as residential? In any case, I would like to thank the planning board for the diligence they've already shown in bringing up these issues in the preliminary meeting. I trust the board to ask any other pertinent questions and make sure that the outcome of the proposal is what it reports to be, i.e. the owner being in residence, the office is being professional, i.e. the photography studio, gallery, offices for architects, lawyers, etc. With all of this being clear in the application that is approved in order to avoid any bad surprises for the neighbors later. Thank you for your work and your time. Signed, Quarantine Howe, 16 Union Street, Ellsworth, Maine, 04605. Thank you.
back on the whole board again. Comments, questions, further uh, action? We close the public hearing? Yes. I mean, I guess just I'm not withstanding what Ed said. I'm, I'm, I'm against approving something with no conditions on it. Uh, it's just uh, and not not to leave it to sometime down the future. It may go to code enforcement officer and may end up being a, a use that this board is is was was not happy with. Uh, what would those conditions be? Just that the the offices would be restricted to uh, the definition of professional and business offices. And I think that's what the intent of uh, the applicant is. Uh, I, I just don't like leaving it open that that somebody could put a convenience store in here. I mean, Dwight's saying that the change of use would come to the code enforcement officer, but who knows what happens from there? Well, you, you could currently put it I know, and that and that's what I'm opposed to, and I and I think we have we have the right to restrict one there. John, is this in an attempt to respond to these public concerns, or are you saying you just don't think a convenience store would fit in the neighborhood? Well, are you asking me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think, uh, I mean, if you look down through that, that table, I mean, I mean, is the convenience store is an allowed use, but I, you know, I don't think that's an appropriate use for that location. Uh, I don't up? think the board had the right to determine that, John. No, I was just going to comment, make that same comment. If, well, it's allowed, if it's allowed in the neighborhood, then where in the exact location is not something the planning board can uh, make a decision about. Well, I, you know, you've mentioned that before, John, and I, I would have to disagree. I mean, the manual cannot cover every situation. And I think if you go to Article 1 on the general purposes, the general purpose of the ordinance are to, one of them is promote the health, safety, and general welfare of residents. And but that's what the, but that's what the language after that heading does. We don't, we don't have the authority to override the, the, the legislative body that enacted this ordinance. And if, if it's a convenience store is a permitted use in the neighborhood, then the only one that, the only way that could be changed is not through the planning board. It would have to, the city council would have to amend the ordinance to, to revoke that use. So that I hear what you're saying, John, but it's not within our authority to do that as a planning board. Um, no, I think one thing I've heard here, though, is we are, we are, it's our understanding this is a continuation of a non conforming use um, as far as these professional offices. Is that what we've, again, I know, you know, there's a difference here between subdivision of uh, and these, these permitted uses um, or non conforming uses, but um, we could potentially note um, that the board found this to be a continuation of non conforming uses. Um, um, and then anyone that comes in to, you know, if subsequent owner or, um, you know, user of the, of the facility of the building would, um, at, that, at least that would be in the record. And there'd be, so a future court code enforcement officer would be able to point to that. Uh, the, and the issue with that though is, that was a strict residential zone at that time, Patrick. So they had to get that that letter from the from the city. Now, the way the ordinance is written for neighborhood, most of the uses that were not allowed then are allowed now. But I support the concept to bring this back to the council because I would, if I lived in that neighborhood, I would have much more concern about someone to be able to have a feedlot beside my house in the back field where they're bringing in cattle and swine and sheep to fatten them up for slaughter. How that ever got in there, I don't know. But if you read the definition, you definitely wouldn't want it in your neighborhood. And I just, so 
if there's still interest from the planning board, I, I know the, the planning office and the code office and economic development, we're looking at um, making some changes to the definitions. Uh, Mike Hange worked really hard on trying to transition the definitions from the International Building Code, which we cannot modify ourselves to modify ours that all match. So our language follows from ordinance to ordinance. So I know the city is going to be taking steps. I think it'd be a good time to point and board, uh, go online and say, look, we need some changes on this item, this item, this item. I certainly agree with that last sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I get credit for is the last one? <laughs> yeah, well, no. Uh, I, I just singled it out for special attention. Okay. I know. I mean, it, there really is a lot of confusion in, in the real, very real sense because commercial uses are disallowed in a neighborhood, right? So if you call this commercial, then it's then it's a non-conforming use. If at the same time a convenience store would be an not that it's being considered, but a convenience store would be an allowed use. Um, you know, I have a little bit of difficulty with allowing disallowing commercial but allowing convenience. I'm not sure exactly who draws that line. Um, but I guess my initial reaction was when the uh, application talked about commercial uses, that that is, you know, in somewhere on the, on the drawing or wherever it said that. And that to me was the red flag. Um, if it, because commercial is disallowed. Well, the in application, the excuse me, Rick, the application now talks about professional offices. Is that, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then that's better. Yes. But, it, but is an art gallery um, a professional office or is it a commercial use? Will they be selling the art? No, it's now um, a studio, a photography studio where pictures are, are taken, but sales of uh, art are not in that. I ask a question of what the, the fear is of having a convenience store as it's been used multiple times. Like, what are we assuming about the, a convenience store versus a professional business office? Well, I, I can give you some history on that. I think it was important for people to realize we decided to do the convenience store because we want more pedestrian and services available to people. So you have a small convenience store in your neighborhood, you don't have to, you can actually walk and get what you need instead of having to drive. And that's, that's what the idea or the concept was that was to hopefully work towards getting more pedestrian passageways through the city so people can easily get to a grocery store and turn, instead of trying to head up High Street where we don't really have much for crosswalks to get across it. I see, I appreciate that. And um, it is a, actually a good location for a convenience store. And I understand that the neighborhood might not like that many comings and goings, but what's to say that the same amount of people wouldn't be coming and going from a professional business, if that's the concern. Well, in this application, a convenience store is not, it's not part of that application. So, I think at bottom here, yeah, these are, you know, issues. While, you know, we're considering here, again, ultimately, and as Dwight's saying, or something for, to be brought to, you know, potentially the city council, um, ultimately to decide, you know, if these uses are or not um, appropriate um, for our purposes. If we're determining this is again to to Ed's point, you know. We're getting a little far field of subdivision approval. Um, but at the end of the day, if, if this is a permitted use in the zone, um, then I think we, do, you know, even aside from that, we're really just focusing whether they've satisfied subdivision requirements here in the ordinance, um, which are separate from the use here. So I'd, I'd, I'd just suggest the board focus on that at this point. So does someone wish to 
discuss it further or is there a motion that, that someone would like to make? I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the final plan review for major use subdivision in Title 8 Union Street for Barbara and Dale Joyce. The proposal is to subdivide the interior of the building to create a multi-use property resulting in residential office and commercial space on a 0.7 acre parcel located at 8 Union Street, tax map 137, lot three. All of the subject property is located within the neighborhood zone. May I suggest that we also include in that directly from the written application that the mixed occupancy shall be professional offices, residents, and Airbnb rental. I'm good with it. Second. Yeah, it's, but Mark, the word commercial that, snuck its way in there again. Well, it, it, it says professional, the application for this says professional offices. But, but what Mark read as the motion oh, had I commercial see. in it. Yes. Ah, maybe Mark would like to reword, take out the commercial and put in professional offices, residential, residents with Airbnb rental. I'm good with that. Um, John, we actually updated the agenda item. Um, so the, the February 3rd agenda um, for 8 Union Street does not have the word commercial in it. So. Uh, it says one residential unit and six professional yeah. office spaces. Yes, it does. So shall, shall I make a new proposal? Mark, if you would. Sure. So okay. I make a move to approve the final plan review for a major use subdivision entitled 8 Union Street for Barbara and Dale Joyce. The proposal is to subdivide the interior of the building to create one residential unit and six professional office spaces on a 0.7 acre parcel located at 8 Union Street, tax map 137, lot 3. All of the subject property is located in the neighborhood zone. Thank you, Second. Is there further discussion on this matter? Well, I guess I, you know, unfortunately, I guess I'd have to throw in there. You know, the applicant wanted a, an Airbnb. Does, does this allow the way the, the motion was read? Does it allow the occupant of the apartment to have an Airbnb? I would say no. Isn't that the purpose of the applicants to hmm. Well, an Airbnb, any, any residents can rent out spaces in Airbnb if it's part of a residence. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. My, my understanding from, from the conversation, just my understanding, probably flawed is is the in the in the motion what essentially what we're doing is we're reflecting our understanding as a board of the of the petitioners uh suggested use we're not necessarily explicitly allowing or disallowing anything because that's not actually within our within our authority um i think that point in the conversation is is i think essentially where i'm stuck so it's for the purpose of maybe code enforcement officers in the future who may have to deal with with issues related to this property we're, we're trying to be as as diligent as we can about the, about the wording but we're not actually explicitly allowing or disallowing any use ultimately my understanding is that is the ceo's job when it comes time to fill those spaces i Pretty much, but but at the same time, I think that uh, you know we can we isn't it within our purview though to say whether these uses are appropriate or not consistent with the zoning ordinance or the whatever we call it. I well, think expressing that opinion is, and, and I think that's what we're doing in the language that we're selecting by con 
consciously including the one residential unit and six professional offices okay. because that enables a conversation or an argument in the future where the code enforcement officer can point back to this as somebody indicated and said this was the city's understanding at, at this time um, and, and, that dialogue. Yeah, and in fact this is what the applicant is asking for so anyhow mm -hmm. Are we ready for to proceed to a vote? A motion is made and seconded. Yes. All in favor, please. Aye. Patrick. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Thank you. Now, at this point, in a regular in-person meeting, I would suggest a um, a recess, but Zoom doesn't do that well. So the next item on the agenda. So final plan review for a major use subdivision, use site development, I'm sorry, entitled Gilpatrick Solar LLC for Brian Stair. The proposal is to construct a 19.81 acre solar energy facility on a 126.86 acre Parcel located on Gilpatrick Road, tax map 58, lot 15. All the property is located in the rural and urban zones. Is someone representing the applicant, please? Hi, John. Chris Byers here. Dale Knapp. How are you, folks? Okay. And uh, are you surviving well? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm afraid all we can do is uh, extend our condolences, but um, yes. it's, it's <laughs> beyond right. our authority to, to try and fix the situation. I was wondering if that question is related to the fact that we always put these guys at the end of our agenda. <laughs> no, that's a that's good. It's good. Sorry, Thanks. we don't have a sepia tone okay. on our on our camera. <laughs> so brick like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for having us. Um, we have kind of just a really quick presentation to follow up on what's been discussed to date. Um, I'll uh, grab my screen real quick here. Oh, that's the one. I'm gonna have to pull that up in a second. But anyway, I guess just a quick summary. Um, we've been working with Carrie on uh, some final items, um, including getting the um, MHPC letter submitted. Uh, as well as the core permit submitted um, uh, to date. It's, I looked through her uh, final TRT report that she provided and it seemed like those were the only open-ended items. Everything else at this point would be uh, conditions that would be applied um, later on uh, at, at the time of issuance of building permit. So um, I guess we're here just to field any final questions that the planning board might have about the project. Now, does the planning board have questions or comments on the project? Don't let them off so easy, folks. Our reputation uh, is at stake. Yeah, I would say Chris said he was having a hard time, so maybe they yeah, feel bad for yeah, him. We're, great. But I'm having a great day, so I'm happy to field any questions you guys might have. We've just exhausted ourselves on Union Street, so sure. you know, that's well, one of the benefits of going last. Ah, all right. Well, I have a question then, since you'll answer any questions we oh, might God. have. <laughs> so the, the open-ended question is why? You can just go off on anything. Oh, okay. Well, um, why everything? <laughs> well, why this project? Yeah. We're trying to move Maine towards a renewable energy future. As we shift transportation and home heating to heat pumps, we're keen on increasing the amount of renewable generation getting pumped into the grid. That's why Gilpatrick. So you're getting solar. pumped up on this then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so if think... there are, let me just open the public hearing. Nate and Carrie, uh, Carrie, do you have any members of the public who wish to speak? I don't have any comments. No comments on Zoom either. Okay. Alan, I'll, I'll throw out a question for Chris. Uh, and it's just general information. Uh, you may not have been here when, uh, just before the meeting, I, I was asking Steve Salisbury about a, a project, a solar farm that he, he presented down in Trenton just recently that was approved. 
And I just found it interesting that they 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 were using double sided solar panels and panels that moved to, mm. to go with the sun. Mm. And this is the first time I've heard something like that. And I'm just kind of curious, is that more what we're going to see in the future or how do you make the decision and yours are fixed one-sided well some of it has to do with the site the slopes on the site trackers need a really flat surface and so if you have some topography you don't want to have to you know remove a lot of material and kind of regrade a very large area uh, but i think we will see you know more uh, bifacial panels is what those two-sided panels are called and, and trackers um, there's a couple facilities just north of Augusta, you know, big flat fields that don't require a, a lot of alteration. But if you've got some slope and you're going to try and cut that down to flatten it out, you know, that doesn't really fit with the natural landscape incredibly well. And it, 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 so it's permitting issues, land disturbance, as well as, as cost and a lack of site suitability. Chris, I... Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe about a third of the projects that we're working on are trackers. I think they're predominantly the fixed tilt that you're seeing here. Um, and if, if that catches uh, popularity, I think we'll continue to see that just as the, you know, basically you get more power per square inch out of a tracker project, right? They're, they're facing east in the morning and then during the, during the day they are eventually facing west. Yeah, and so. in this region, once there are a few of those systems that are installed, I think um, operator confidence may increase because yeah, yeah, snow, point. we get a lot of snow here. And so some of those manufacturers are a bit nervous kind of having that equipment here. You know, obviously the fixed uh, projects are a proven technology in this environment. Um, trackers are kind of new here. And so there may be a little bit of risk tied to that, but we're definitely seeing them permitted and built. Yep. I'm generally, uh, on the trackers, I mean, generally speaking, how much more power do they produce? Um, about 15%. 15. Yep. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, it's a good Thank question. You. Yeah, no problem. So, what would the board like to do at this point? I'll make a motion that we approve the the final plan review for major use site development titled Gilpatrick Solar LLC for Ryan Stair. The proposal is to construct a 19.81 acre solar energy facility on a 126.86 acre parcel located on the Gilpatrick Road. Tax map 58, lot 15, all the subject property is located in a rural and urban zones. Is there a second, please? Second. Any discussion? In that case, all in favor, please. All right. Well, uh, is your day getting better now? <laughs> so much better. I'm gonna <laughs> also go get some dinner. It'll be great. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it, guys. You know, uh, I think we mentioned this last time, but you know, it's really nice working with you. You've got a great board here. You guys ask great questions. Um, I'm sure that the people that live in Ellsworth are glad to have you guys, you know, running the, the rules and regs for your town. Yeah, we're really, you guys are one of my favorite planning boards. I'm kind of sad that we're, we, maybe we should do some more projects in Ellsworth. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. How about a nice fancy certificate <laughs> appreciating us that we can yeah. have the city hall? Well, do you have uh, the one you gave Mike? We could use that as a template. Yeah, yeah I was surprised to see Mike still on the call here. Maybe he just uh, couldn't give it up. <laughs> it's your swan song, right? Again. Well, it, it could be that he's just so addicted to <laughs> being at planning board meetings that he has to ease himself out of it now and go yeah. into it. He can always listen in and come in on the public hearing, right? Yeah. Yes, of course. Maybe we'll do that next time. Yeah. <laughs> like, Who's Jeff? Jeff? Who's Jeff? I don't know if everybody's... <laughs> I don't know if everybody saw it enough, but you might want to introduce Elena as well. I was going to just do that if she would unmute herself. Hello. Hello. This is Are Elena Picot. She is our new city planner. She was an assistant planner a number of years ago with while well, Michelle Janion was planner. And I am very happy to have her back. And uh, I think you will like working with her as well. At least I do hope so. 
That's great. Nice yeah. to meet you, Elena. Nice to meet you. Carrie mentioned that you'd be yeah. on. So um, yeah. thanks again, Carrie, for all your help. Um, you've been a really super communicator and um, done a great job with your with your work. But Carrie will still be here. You're very oh. welcome. Oh, yes, yes. No, sorry, that was not in memoriam. I'm just making <laughs> sure she gets acknowledgement. <laughs> yeah. Well, Elena, thanks again. Wish, Have a good night. And, uh, do you wish to address anything, Elena? Well, just happy to be here. And um, I held my tongue this this month, this evening. But um, at our next meeting, I'll be more active. And as far as we know right now, I don't think we expect any applications to come in next week. So we may not have a meeting for March, um, which would give me a nice chance to get settled. Um, but we'll know, let you know. I know all of us will be very, very sad not to meet next month, but we're adults, we can handle it. Yeah, bittersweet. There's Did I? Could I propose a, a workshop of sorts? Um, we had one workshop that I was a part of. I'm a new alternate, um, and I found it extremely rewarding and helpful. And I really yeah, like that's that's a great idea. If we don't have any other business, um, um, do you have any particular subject in mind, Molly? Great you... question. Can I get back to you on that? Well, get back to Elena. We'll do. Unless, unless it is so far out that my opinion is uh, important. <laughs> oh, I, I have one final note too. Um, you know, we talked on the, you know, there was a, uh, we're going to be preparing a letter uh, to uh, the city uh, fathers and mothers um, in support of the redoing the comprehensive plan. So, you know, everybody kind of sign on to that and I'll be drafting a letter uh, for your review in the next couple of days and I'll send that around and then it'll come from John though. So we're on, we're on track to do that. Okay. Wonderful. So is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor adjournment, please. Bye. See you kids. <laughs>